The Washington Post reporting today, quote, those two things together, that a Trump Organization email address was used to facilitate the payment and that the payment was linked to the campaign would constitute a legal violation. Stormy Daniels' attorney appeared on this network earlier today to refute Trump's claims of ignorance. Michael Cohen is a licensed attorney under the New York State Bar Rules. And attorneys in every state have very specific rules that they have to live by. There is a requirement, meaning it's not optional, that an attorney inform his or her client at, uh, at all times of all material facts relating to a negotiation, a case, etc. So in this instance, if in fact Mr. Trump was Mr. Cohen's client, then there's no question that Mr. Trump knew all about this. And here to talk more about all of this, we have convinced Barmer McQuaid, the former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan, to stick around as we need a lawyer yet again. And Jonathan Allen joins us, our NBC News national political reporter. Um, so, Barbara, I, I want to show you something. Uh, Preet Bharara, one of the few people who's actually been fired since Donald Trump was president, uh, former uh, U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, uh, a man of equally keen intellect and humor. Uh, tweeted this tonight, sometimes my personal lawyer will just pay my mortgage off without asking, such a good guy, I'm lucky. Obviously, Barbara, uh, the former U.S. attorney is having some fun there, but it does cut to the heart of this, doesn't it? Yeah, Preet has a keen wit, but I think he is um, you know, homing in on the issue here, which is, um, you know, lawyers don't give you $130,000 for nothing, and they have a duty to keep you apprised of what they're doing on your behalf. And so, as uh, the lawyer for Ms. Daniels said, uh, lawyers communicate with their clients. They have a duty to communicate with their clients. So the idea that Michael Cohen did something and didn't communicate uh, that information to Donald Trump uh, would be a, a lapse of his ethical duty. So it doesn't really seem plausible. Let's talk for a minute about this uh, new attorney for Stormy Daniels. Uh, as a uh, motor racing fan, uh, a lot of us know his name uh, from the uh, endurance car circuit. He has many starts under his belt as a race car driver. He has raced at Le Mans and Daytona and Sebring in Florida in endurance races. Uh, to the legal side of his life, tonight he went on CNN and unveiled another new email. It's an email that happens to make mention of the Yom Kippur break. It looks ordinary, but he went into detail tonight on why, in his view, it's far from ordinary. We'll listen to that. Now, why is this important, the reference to Yom Kippur in the office? Because it, it appears to be rather innocuous when you, when you look at it. Uh, and we assert, your, uh, we assert actually that it's not innocuous because uh, if in fact the payment was being made personally by attorney Cohen, he wouldn't need his office open in order to effectuate the payment. Your opinion on that one, Barbara? Well, it's an interesting point. I suppose the idea is that uh, he, he's using the office because this is corporate funds that are being used for this uh, this payment. And the reason that would be significant, also the you know the email from coming from the Trump Organization, you know, suggests yet another link to uh, a corporate entity. And the campaign finance laws prohibit donations from corporate entities. They only allow donations from individuals. And so, if uh, the funds were either paid for by the Trump Organization or reimbursed Michael Cohen, uh, that would be a violation of campaign finance laws, a, a criminal violation. All right, Jonathan, now we need a journalist. Uh, to Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she um, introduced this notion of arbitration from the podium this week. The questions continued to pile up today. Um, she's continuing to deflect. Does this cycle just remain the same in your view? Yeah, I think this is a story that's going to keep going for quite a while uh, because of the political nature of it. Uh, you know, on the legal side, uh, the Federal Election Commission is essentially uh, impotent and has been for years uh, to the extent that they ever were interested in recommending uh, prosecution of criminal vi potential criminal violations of uh, campaign finance laws. They, they essentially have not done that very often in the past, and prosecutors and juries don't seem particularly interested in that. However, you do have a story where you have an adult film star uh, 
alleging that she had an affair with the president of the United States and that she was paid hush money in order to make sure that he won the presidency. I, I can't believe all those words just came out, out of my mouth, much like uh, I can't believe that I used a work computer to put the name Stormy Daniels into a Google search earlier today to read some of the stories. Um, this stuff is pretty incredible. I think it will continue for some time. You're starting to see some pressure from uh, from Democrats uh, talking about this on Capitol Hill a lot more because they're I think they're frankly surprised that there aren't more Republicans that are concerned about this issue. Jonathan, it's new territory for you, for me, for Barbara, for everybody who has a role <laughs> in covering this. And I have to ask you, though, is this a new standard of measurement? This is our president in the post-access Hollywood world. I mean, certainly it's a, a new standard. It's unprecedented. You know, we keep using that word for, uh, for, for this presidency. I'm not sure that it is a standard uh, that other presidents will be able to, uh, uh, to have applied to them.